Hey guys, Thunderhound369 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Cobra Sea Ray with Cobra Sea Slug figure. Now, I want to thank a real good friend of mine here on YouTube. I want to thank Lunacy05 for helping me to complete this thing. <clears throat> because this is actually the second Sea Ray that I've bought within the last year. Because I bought one off of a guy at a comic book shop last summer. for He wanted 15. I talked him down to 10. It wasn't complete. I was trying to complete it, but in the process of completing that Sea Ray, it got into a little accident. Things got broke. So I had you know, no choice but to abandon trying to complete that one and try to get a whole new one. So... Lunacy05 and I were on Skype one night, and uh, I mentioned that to him. And he immediately found an almost complete Sea Ray. It was missing only one of the front nose guns and a couple of the torpedoes. Other than that, it came with the file card, and it did come with the figure and the weapon. Everything was complete on that Sea Ray. And I think it was priced at right around nine dollars. So shipping brought it up to fifteen. So all together in this C Ray, I've got twenty dollars total. But this is mostly the C Ray from eBay. So mostly this C Ray has only got nine dollars in it. So you can find these things pretty cheap floating around on eBay, apparently. So Thank you, Lunacy05, for helping me to complete my vintage Cobra Sea Ray. You rock, buddy. Uh, so anyway, we'll get on with the vehicle and the figure here. So first off, we'll start off with the uh, file card. And I'm kind of in a little bit of a weird angle here because this thing doesn't fit my normal spot. So I've had to kind of turn everything in a different direction so I could get some more room so I'm kind of having to stretch for stuff here so anyway we'll start off with the file card as you can see it's been cut off and there's nothing on the back uh, Sea Slug is the Sea Ray Navigator Sea Slugs are chosen from the ranks of eels which are the Cobra Frogmen as such they are qualified in underwater demolitions small boat tactics and a wide range of sonar gear specialized sea slug training concentrates on the use of the sea ray tactical submersible and its variants there's variants of this huh wonder why they've never shown a variation anyway the three phases of Sea Ray training are river, sand, ports, deep ocean, and arctic. The training cadre expects a 35% attri attrition rate during the arctic phase. The Sea Ray is coated with a rubberized damper that sends back an extremely indistinct bounce on all sonars. It is also equipped with a noise generator that can mimic the sounds produced by a humpback whale. Nice. It has almost no heat signature and sits low in the water when on the surface. In other words, they are very hard to detect and once you've found them, you have to deal with the sea slugs that man them. Okay. And then over here we've got a nice little artwork of the sea slug itself himself piloting the or navigating the sea ray very nice and we'll set the card off to the side now and take a look at the figure as you can see here we'll go ahead and get this thing out of the background that way we're kind of focusing mostly on the figure itself <coughs> pardon me guys kind of a little bit of a sniffles over the weekend while at work kind of getting over that I hope so anyway here we take a look at the sea slug nice purple uniform 
got what looks to be like a slug emblem just on his chest here. As you can see, he comes with his weapon. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. You can see he holds it quite well as he falls over like like a drunken ballerina there. So anyway, here we have the his weapon. If I can hold on to it, just one piece of molded gray silver plastic. Got some fairly good detail in there. It's got the nice got the trigger on it, molded onto it. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't. Ha he does not have a holster or anything to where he can put this thing. So we'll go ahead and put that back here where I can keep an eye on it. Have to babysit that for the remainder of the video. So anyway, as you can see, he does have another pistol with a holster molded up around his leg. And unfortunately, the helmet's not removable, which, in my opinion, I don't mind the helmet not being removable because then it would just be a little bit bigger than his head and it would just kind of like flop around, I think. So this is actually good. You can see, like I said, you know, nice molded or just purple plastic is all this guy is with a few painted parts here and there. You know, he's got the red paint around the band of the helmet, the silver for the eye goggles and the uh, flesh tone skin on the arms and the face. And it's got these black shoulder pads. I don't I guess you'd call them pads. Black gloves, black around the upper part of the boots. Brown belt with some silver paint, you know, on the buckle. Silver here. Brown pouches. And the holster leg holster for the other pistol, the black pistol painted. Instead of them molding that, usually when they mold a weapon like this onto a leg, they mold the entire thing, one part, one color, or just paint it one color, which would be all brown. But in this case, they painted the holster brown and the weapon black. Very nice. Peg holes. Now, as far as his articulation goes, his head will go left. We'll go side to side, up, but no down. Arms will go out, down, rotate at the bicep, uh, elbow, bends at the elbow. No wrist joint. <coughs> Pardon me again. Now, this guy does have waist articulation, but unfortunately due to the fact that these vintage G.I. Joe figures have O-rings, now the O-ring connects to a little hook just up inside the chest and down here just inside the waist. Now they can rotate side to side, forward, back, pivot, side to side. Now the thing of it is, I don't. I don't know if I've actually reviewed a, a, a vintage figure from GI Joe before. I don't think I have. I may have. I don't know. But anyway, you can rotate these things a full 360. But, but it's not really advisable that you do so because that weakens the O-ring, and over time, everything it becomes pretty much to where you cannot pretty much stand the figure at all everything just flops loose and then over time it will eventually break and then they're not they're not that hard to replace but they're not that they're not really that much fun to replace either because I have done that to a few over time and you can't buy the o-rings you know I've seen them on eBay you know people sell them constantly but I don't see the need of buying the O-rings from eBay when you can pretty much, if you've got a figure that you don't really need a lot of, or you know it's got a broken arm, just take it apart, get that O-ring, 
take it down to your local hardware store and get one at your local hardware store. They're, they sell them at your local hardware store for just a few cents. Few, few cents. So, you know, you can get O rings to replace these at your local hardware store. You know, Lowe's, Target. Uh, yeah, Target may even sell them back in the housewares or whatever. But anyway, overall, what do I recommend on the C Ray? If you've already, if you have a complete C Ray, you've got to have the C Slug. So anyway, we'll go ahead and take the take a look at the vehicle. Bring it back in here. As you can see, it's way. It's a little bit bigger. It's not a huge vehicle, but it's a little bit bigger than what I'm used to displaying on my shelves. I mean, I do have a few things here lately that are just a little bit bigger. So anyway, here we have the Sea Ray itself, and uh, as you can see, it's just molded in one cut, one color with a few other extra, few other colors here. It's got this. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of color you'd want to call that, like a bluish gray, maybe a teal. Don't really know what color to call that, but then you've got the red guns, torpedoes, and the black for the fin and the engine cover. And it's got this translucent red cockpit cover. It's got some pretty good decals on it, you know decals have kind of worn over time so you can see this thing has been played with over time but it has also been well taken care of even though it was missing just a few pieces nice little Cobra logos just here and there I think that says Supposed to say Lamprey, Lamprey on the on the side is what that's supposed to represent number wise. I could be wrong. You come in here and take a look at the cockpit. Not a lot of detail in there. There is some detail, you know. The seat is molded. Got the joysticks. Plenty of room for the figure to fit. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and. Stick him in there and get him out of the way. Oh, the one thing. I, damn, guys. I both forgot. About the articulation on the legs. They do bend. But the one thing I forgot to point out on this one. Look how stiff that joint's gotten over time. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get him back in get him in here this ain't going to be one of my most graceful reviews it doesn't look like so stick him in there there you see he does fit quite well and yeah it does you can put a 25th anniversary figure in there got plenty of room for that I've already tried and I'm not going to do that for the sake of this video so anyway Got the nice little molded laser gun, machine gun, whatever you want to call it here on the nose gun, nose turret. They do rotate, but they cannot rotate full 360. When in this mode, anyway, in this mode, got a total of eight torpedoes that are removable. They're just red molded plastic, got the little dog bone. Got the little dog bone clips just here that dog bone shaped clips. And like I said, got the engine cover which is molded in plastic, in black plastic, and it does detach. It's supposed to be an engine cover, but there's not much of an engine in there, so if you wanted to, you could use it for storage. Maybe it might be 
house an extra figure in there because this thing does hold it holds one in the cockpit you can put an extra figure here as well as it does come apart but let me alright guys sorry about that I had to cut the camera off because <clears throat> I did forget to mention that this thing does come apart you have this one man submersible with attachment point where you can stick another figure under here like a eel but I had to do it off camera because the one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video even though it is complete this connection point right through here where the uh, bottom half of the man one the, the mini sub and the top half the connectors are broke so unfortunately I had to do it off camera because I didn't want everything to fly apart so I had to take and shut the camera off and be extra gentle with that but anyway here you have the back half now there's no peg anywhere but you can stick another figure just in here and use this back half as a hang glider or at least that's what I've seen from pictures of this thing being separated you know this is like a one man hang glider and this is a one or a mini sub so anyway I'm going to shut the camera off one more time guys so I can put this thing back together I'll be right back and then we're going to go do a float test so we'll be right back hey guys I'm back as you can see you're looking at a sink a kitchen sink full of water so that means it's time to see if the sea ray I got right here can float so let's check this thing out and see what happens we'll just set her down in here gently see if the whole thing will float unfortunately the sub part seems to be wanting to float but overall the whole thing I would say is a no-go I would say as far as a float test I'd say overall the whole thing together does, does you know it halfway floats it half ass floats but as far as the mini sub part if you were to detach if you could detach all this which you can but over time we'll put stress marks on these clips here and here as you can see those have already been stressed out enough so I'd say just the mini sub itself may float but hold on we'll find out hey guys we're back as you can see back at the test sink again but in this case we've got the one man mini sub for the sea ray so let's see if just the, the submarine part itself it floats well I'd say yeah the front half does float but as far as overall it half ass floats as the whole thing so anyway, anyway guys let's get this thing dried off and head on back over to the review area shall we be right back okay guys we're back got this thing dried off as best I can but I went ahead and put down a towel just in case there was any any little water droplets anywhere that I didn't that I didn't get or were up in everything that may have dropped may be dripping out so I put the towel down so anyway let's see overall on the float test the whole thing floats about half ass mini sub got a little bit of lean but it does float so overall it's 
I'd play with this. You know. Anyway. <coughs> Dang. So overall, what do I recommend on picking this thing up? If you're a G.I. Joe collector and you're into the vintage stuff, I'd say pick it up. I mean, this is right around the time when the vehicle designs were getting a little unbelievable and outlandish. You know, people kind of, you know, true hardcore G.I. Joe collectors have a tendency to stay away from this particular era of vehicles because they, they that's right around the time when everything started getting a little weird. And nobody likes that because everybody likes G.I. Joe and Cobra to be the true military style. Well, you know, which I don't mind the true military style, but let's face it. It's a, <clears throat> it's a cartoon. It's make-believe. Not everything needed to be true military style to me. I, I kind of like these outlandish designs. That's when, to me, that's when G.I. Joe the vehicles actually started getting a little bit more interesting. <clears throat> I mean, I do like the, er, the earlier 82 through 85 where everything is true military, but from 86 on up till, gosh, I'd say from, what, 86 up until 89? You know, right just when the Eco and the Eco <coughs> Warriors and DEF and Monster and all that was. That's where I pretty much started drawing the line for G.I. Joe and Cobra. You know, it got Star Brigade and all that. I started getting a little, no, nah, I didn't really like that. So, pretty much there's a fine line, you know, some for me, so. Anyway, I can recommend picking this up. I mean, it is a nice vehicle. If you can find it cheap and you can find it complete, I would say complete with file card, figure, everything. I'd say complete. You may be able to find this thing for 20 bucks, but if you have to, you know, you could probably go the route that I was trying to go, that I went, and that's piece one together with a little help, <clears throat> with a little help from friends, of course. So anyway, again, I want to say thanks to Lunacy05 for helping me to complete this. Um, especially, you know, because I just want to say that if it hadn't been for him, I probably wouldn't have even got off, off my lazy butt to, to have done it. So because I get on eBay and I get distracted, you know, I go looking for nose gun here. And I get distracted and go buy something completely different. I think I got AD, ADD or something when it comes to buying stuff because I can't put my mind to focus on one thing and I get over here to buy that. It's like, I want this, but ooh, there's something shiny over there. I gotta have it. So thanks Lunacy05 for helping me to complete this. And I can say overall, yeah, it would be it's a nice display piece. It displays real well. Especially since I've got this on the shelf with my Iron Grenadier Razorback which should be coming up somewhere soon, I hope. So anyway, guys, I'm Thunderhound369. This has been my look at the G.I. Joe Cobra Sea Ray with Sea Slug action figure. I do recommend picking one up if you can find one cheap. Until next time, guys, I'm out of here. See y'all.